Israel is front and center in the American news cycle with fierce dialogue underway. However, it's not for discussion about its horrific human rights abuses, the oppression of Palestinians, or the gunning down of a Palestinian child just on Friday. No, this week a smear campaign was waged against Congresswoman Ilhan Omar for simply bringing up the power of pro-Israel groups in the United States. Looking at the comments in question, you may even laugh that this is what drew the widespread backlash because they're so innocuous. First, Omar responded to a tweet about Congressman McCarthy threatening her for criticizing Israel. This wasn't condemned or debated about, but rather it was her response implying the corruption of McCarthy. The other tweet is when Omar responded to a question of, well, who is paying politicians to support Israel? And she simply replied, AIPAC, the American Israel Public Affairs Committee, one of the biggest lobbies in America. That's it. Those two simple comments, which reflect the truth about pro-Israel groups like AIPAC, drew widespread condemnation under the charges of anti-Semitism and made headlines everywhere. Omar is terrible, what she said. And I think she should either resign from Congress or she should certainly resign from the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Everyone from the president to Democratic lawmakers condemned Omar and tried to say she was referencing the anti-Semitic trope of Jewish money. This is utter nonsense. AIPAC, like all lobbies, uses money to influence politicians. That's what lobbies do. For those of us that have been around the Israel-Palestine issue, we know this charge of anti-Semitism all too well. It's hurled at all critics of the state of Israel. And in fact, I'm sure it'll be in the comments of this video. This is the tactic of AIPAC, of Mossad, Israel's intelligence apparatus. They try to equate any criticisms of the state of Israel or its policies as an attack on Jewish identity. They know the power of labeling someone as an anti-Semite, and they have used it time and time again as this former Mossad agent will explain. Now, I know what they do because I used to ask them to do it. I mean, when I was in the Mossad and we had a guy that gave us problems in the U.S. and he was speaking out and he was talking like, like Pete talked once and said, Israel is bombing Lebanon with cluster bombs. We say, hey, who's that guy? You know, Pik Makakhi, we used to call him. Yeah, which is Pete the Cockroach. Because he makes a lot of noise and you can't get rid of him. So what you do is you get in touch with a guy in, in, the, in the station in New York or in the station in Washington. You say, tell the guys at B'nai to label him. And of course the campaign starts and before you know it, the guy's labeled. And he's an anti-Semite. Because that's what we say he is. And that's one stain you cannot wash. This is what tyrannical powers must do. They must come up with lies and smears to crush people who speak against their brutality. There is no logical defense of Israel. Therefore, irrational attacks must be created. The facts are that Israel is racist. It's an apartheid state. And through state actions and the actions of allied donors and organizations like AIPAC, it garners the continued support of the United States. AIPAC and pro-Israel donors have immense influence on Congress and dictate policy as it relates to Israel. AIPAC spends millions of dollars creating propaganda and policy directives, organizing payments to congressional members, and taking them on free trips to Israel. The fundraiser was for Anthony Brown, who ran for Congress in November 2016. This is direct spending. Brown's going to use that 30 grand to do ad campaign. We wanted to make sure if we give you money that you're going to enforce the Iran deal. That way, when they need something from him or her, like the Iran deal, they can quickly mobilize and say, look, we'll give you 30 grand. They actually impact. Pro-Israel lobbying groups spent over $5 million just last year, and APAC accounts for the vast majority of that, as they've spent over $43 million lobbying in the United States since 2000. The real irony is that the United States government and corporate media have been pounding the point of Russian influence on American elections time and time again, turning it into a toxic label to be used to target those who don't fall in line with establishment policy. While the media conjures up hysteria over a Russian threat, one nation with immense control over United States policy goes unchallenged. Uh, first of all, if you're interested in foreign interference in our elections, uh, whatever the Russians may have done, uh, barely 
uh, counts uh, weighs in the balance as compared with what another state does uh, openly, brazenly, and uh, uh, with uh, enormous support. Uh, Israeli uh, intervention in U.S. Inter uh, elections uh, vastly overwhelms anything the Russians may have done. I mean, the even to the point where the prime minister of Israel, Netanyahu, uh, uh, goes directly to Congress without even informing the president and speaks to Congress with overwhelming applause uh, to try to undermine the president's policies. The irony is that through all of this, the pro-Israel apparatus actually proved its power and control. It proved Omar's point. Thank you for watching. Please share this video. And stay tuned to If Americans New for all the latest news and analysis.